guys, welcome back. Today we are doing the Bender Wallet 2.0. Uh, so it has got some similarities to the other one, but it's got some added card slots here and a note section in the back. I've also made this one out of vinyl instead of leather, just to prove that you can do it. And I've also put some fabric on the back to make it like super fun. So if you'd like to see how I make this, stay tuned. All right, guys, so you're going to need some glue. Uh, so I'm using the Quick Grip Spray Glue, just because it's literally quick. Um, and your fabric. And then I'm doing the two-tone vinyl. So you just need a small scrap piece of your accent colour and then some of your mane. Now I'm doing vinyl just so you guys can see you don't have to do leather to use this pattern. And I've also got some edge paint. Now this bit's optional and it will be at the end, uh, but that's entirely up to you. So, you need to work out with your pieces which bit colours you want where. So I want my accents to be the red, so it's going to be this part and those parts there. And then my main pieces are going to be the black. So from the back, I'm just going to get a pen. Should have got that before, but I always forget something. And then I'm just going to lay this on. And trace around. Now this middle part here I will actually be cutting out with a craft knife. Now I'm going to line this one up against that edge. So even though these are scrap pieces you still don't want to waste stuff because you could get a second accent piece out of this same scrap then. You can also do all the colours one colour. I just thought this would be more fun to show you some funky things to do just in time for Father's Day. Okay, so that's those ones. And then I'm going to take this. Now I did pre-check to see if it was going to fit everything. And it should. Now because there's no... There's no um, kind of pattern on the back of this. You can, you've got more playroom to stick it wherever you need to. And that one goes there, and then that will fit there like that. Um, if your vinyl is directional, so it's got like a print on it, you obviously can't do what I'm doing and just whack them anywhere. And I would also potentially use a erasable friction texture on the front. And trace it out so you center the prints and patterns that you want. But as these are accent pieces and you're not going to see very much of them, we can skip a lot of that. You're only really going to see this top little bit. Um, and I'm going to skip the accent stitching today so that it's really beginner friendly. Okay, so that's all the... Um, vinyl pieces cut out so I'm just gonna hit the pause on the video and cut them all out. I'll come back and show you how I cut because a lot of people seem to have some issues with the cutting straight um, so for starters I'm using my class A knives to cut the vinyl they're just a little bit kind of more rigid than the other ones so what I do is I try and cut the full length of the blade otherwise you're doing twice as much handwork and I slide the blade in to line it up and then slice down. And then when I open it again, I take that extra second to line my blade up so that I'm not making jagged cuts anywhere. And that's about the only thing I can think that I do that you may not know about. But I do try and use the full um, length of the blade. Also, ignore my black finger. I didn't hurt it, it's just hair dye. All right, so again, using the full length of the blade. And then when I stopped to turn just then, I reopened up the blade so that I'm getting the most out of a straight cut as I can. So I cut that bit and then I open it back up again to do the curve. Because the wider the scissors are, the more chance you have of doing the curve in one kind of closing, which makes it neater. 
So anyway, to cut this out, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the craft knife and stab it along the edge here. You probably can't really see what I'm doing, but it's going to be really hard to show you. So I'm just slicing slowly along that line, and I just want a hole big enough so I can then get my scissors in. So I'm not going to um, use my blade to cut the whole way. Just a starting point. And now I obviously can't open my scissors all the way up for this corner, so I'm going to do little snips, which is contrary to what I said before. And then as soon as I get the opportunity, so now, because it's more flexible, I can open them all the way up and cut this in a nice... That took two scissor lots, but still, you get the idea. So then cut... And then as I get to this corner, I've opened them back up again so that I've got more control around that curve. And there you go. Center is out. Now, a um, couple of things. Firstly, if you wanted to, you could put edge paint along all of these edges. Um, I'm just going to use the edge paint at the end. But I am going to take my Star Wars fabric and open it out and I want to think about what's going to poke through my hole here. So I'm going with the red and black design since I've picked the red and black vinyl. So that is what I want to come through. Um, but obviously we don't stick it to that piece but we just have to think about where I'm going to put the other piece. So I want it there. So what I can do is I can line it up and then pull this out like this. Shake up your glue if it's a shake one. Uh, you can also paint on glue so you could use Mod Podge or any kind of fabric glue. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to spray both the back of the vinyl and the fabric. And then smooth it down. Now this will obviously take a little bit of time to dry. And you also want to make sure that you've got all the way to the edge. And I just sprayed that on the top, which is exactly what I didn't want to do. All right. So since I got it on the top, I am going to go and get uh, some cleaner before it dries and wipe that off. Uh, orange power stickiness remover. You just put a little bit on a cloth and then just wipe it off. I use this on my iron as well because I seem to get a lot of um, glue on my iron. Uh, it smells like oranges, which is kind of nice. Alright, there we go. That's better. So then once that's fully dry, uh, we're going to cut all of this out. And I'm actually putting my scissors on a bit of an angle. What this is going to do is it's going to cut just a little bit in from the edge so that we're not going to have any fraying pieces. So I'm just angling my scissors so it's cutting just inside. Okay. So now when we go to put this on, see how that covers and sticks out the hole? Awesome. Okay, so the other place I want to put some um, fabric is on the back of the card slots because we're going to see that where you put your money in. And I don't want it to be white. It doesn't really work. And I don't want to put another piece of vinyl because that will be too thick. And thick is also not what I'm going for. So I'm going to... I might go this way and make it say Star Wars right in the center. So again, we're going to spray the glue uh, onto the fabric. And then with my... Um, what's this called? Baking paper. There we go. Sorry, I lost the word for a second there. You can make sure you can just spray that on. You can even leave the glue to dry for a few seconds so it becomes sticky. And then I'm going to center the Star Wars part onto there. And then you can just push it out. You might even want to put something weighty on it. Uh, to help push it all down evenly and then you want to let that dry as well. 
And then again, we're going to cut that out. So I am going to stop the video. And then when you see me again, we'll be over at the machine. All right. So we should now have this piece, which is vinyl on the front or leather. You can do leather if you want. And then fabric. And then we've got uh, this piece with fabric and a different colored vinyl. And then we're going to start with this piece here. So what we need are our little pieces. And so we're going to start with uh, this one. Now, if you want to, now I'm not going to because I'm doing like a super basic video, but if you wanted to, you could top stitch one eighth of an inch along the top of all of these pieces. Um, that's if you want to. You can also top stitch along this curved edge here. Um, for the purposes of today, I'm going to skip that. Just because I'm all about super basic, quick video. Uh, so the idea is, is what we're doing, is we're going to stitch that one there, and then we're going to put this one over the top. So this, this one has to line up here. So the easiest way to work this out is line this one up along the bottom and then push this one down until it's sitting where you want it to. So you want to just overlap those edges. And so I want mine to sit here. This is how to do it without the um, template anyway. So then I'm going to clip the red one on both sides at the top here. And so then I can remove the black one. And then just stitch with a, I'm using three and a half. So you don't want it too small because you don't want to over perforate it. And I'm just going to stitch one eighth of an inch from that bottom. I'm going to make sure I back stitch at both ends. And then that one is on. Trim off all my tails, put them in the bin. And so then we're going to take our other one and sit it directly on top and so I'm going to stitch along this inside here so the bottom edges and the side edge we're actually going to stitch later when we join everything together so if you want to because again beginners video right clip it so we're going to clip so everything's lining up nicely along that edge. And so we're just going to stitch this inside edge here. So I'm going to start, I'm going to um, start about one eighth of an inch up from the edge. Whoops. And I'm stitching a one eighth seam. So we're going all the way up to the red one and then back stitch. So we don't have to go all the way to the end, we're just stitching those down so they don't flap about. Like so. So we've just stitched, you can't really see because it's black, but we've just stitched from the red down that side. So now we're going to do the same with our other pockets. So we're going to line up the bottom one and then you can get this one and slot it behind that so that you can line that up where you want it to sit so you just want to hide those little side tabs but you still want to see it now again if you had top stitching there that would look really pretty but as you can tell we can definitely make it without it it's not a joining stitch therefore it's not a necessity this one, however, is a necessity. So again, one eighth of an inch from the bottom of the red vinyl. So it's now just stitched on. It actually flaps. So it's just stitched on with one little stitch there. And then we're going to take this one and then clip it down. So you want to line up all the edges. Now, if you've cut it a little bit big, that's fine. Uh, now's the time to trim it down so that it won't mess up your um, top stitching. You put as many clips as you like so it all lines up nicely. 
Now I can actually see here, see how I've made mine a little bit too big? So I can just come along with some scissors and flip it over this way and just trim it down. I've got to obviously move the clip out of the way. It's like the tiniest amount, but it will make a difference. So do chop it off. There we go. Look at that, beautiful. Now again, if you were gonna top stitch here, now's the time to do it. And then we're going to place that on the outside. I'm gonna clip that, because I'm all about the clips. So it wants to line up along the bottom edge As many or as few clips as you like. And then the side edge. Like that. Lots of clips. So the money will eventually go into here. And then this side, what we're going to do is we're going to add this in. Because we all know how I feel about trying to triple clip things. So I won't need all of these clips. But we're just making sure that everything is lining up along the outside edge. There's probably more clipping than sewing in this if we're not top stitching. We want to make sure everything's down flat. Now you'll notice along this top edge here, we're not going to be clipping this. So we, we, what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch the whole way around this after everything is beautifully clipped together. Like that. I know it looks like a lot of clips. You possibly don't need that many, uh, but it's okay if you do. I'm going to use that many. All right, so now the idea is you want to start somewhere. Now, I don't want to start... I actually think I might start on the top. And the reason for that is, is because both the sides are black on the top. So it's less likely to see my stitch joint. Now, I'm not going to back stitch because I'm going completely around. I know it's a rectangle, but we're going to get back to our start point. So there's no need to back stitch at the start and the end if we're going to start and end in the same spot, if that makes sense. It didn't sound like it made sense. See, I nearly back stitched that out of habit. Um, if you, you can back stitch, it just means you're going to have a more prominent stitch area so it's more likely that you're going to see and notice the back stitching whereas i would like it to be as less noticeable as possible i don't want it to draw focus on this so i'm just stitching with a 1 8 seam allowance and i'm making sure that everything sits flat so you'll notice i just started and stopped there because these little um flaps moved so I just push them back under. Right in the corner, needle down and pivot. All right, so now I'm back to the start. I'm gonna go through two holes and then back stitch two, and that's it. So now that I've stitched it, 
It's pretty cool, right? So, but you can see up here, it either slipped a little bit or I did not cut it perfectly. So you can see just little bits along here. So I'm going to take my scissors and now I'm just going to square it all up. You may also want to do this on a rotary board with a ruler and a cutter. I just got the most minuscule bits. I'm also using my zipper scissors, which is not ideal. I should be using super sharp, glorious ones. I'm just going to trim off anything that's sticking out. And then technically, you can be done there. So that was super, super quick. I don't know how long that took. Uh, Ten minutes worth of sewing. Um, so you can definitely just stop there, and that is the wallet done. I, however, would also like to edge coat the edges. Uh, so we're going to go back over to Not My Sewing Machine table and do that. Alright, so I got this... Um on eBay. It's not actually in English, but it says red on the top, so that counts. Um, so it's edge coat oil, they call it, or edge paint, depending on what brand. And this is like this really cool thing, and the end twists. So all you do is dip it in, and then hold it up, and just run it along the edge. And what that's going to do is create that glorious lip that you see when you go to shops. On bought ones. Now I might have to put two coats on this because it is quite thick. There are many many layers there. The idea is is you just brush it on and let the wheel rotate. And see look it basically seals it as one continuous piece then. This is definitely going to need a second coat but I'm going to put one coat on now to show you guys. So you just dip the end in you don't wipe off excess paint, it's not like a normal paintbrush. And then we just roll it onto the edge. There's no magical... As you can see, I've got to go over it a few times. Because of the gap, we're going to try and fill that gap with the edge paint. It's kind of what we're doing. I've never used this red one before, so we're going to see how pigmented it is. But for $4, I'm not expecting super miracles. But you never know. Alright, so there we go. That just sealed up that hole. You see how I've still got a hole here? You can see the gap? I just want to fill it with paint, basically. Roll along the edge. Ta-da! Third edge, and off we go. This may not be the right way to use edge paint, but this is how I use it. Works for me. That's what matters, right? Do what works for you. These things are only like, I don't know, 4 or $5 or so on eBay. I'm sure you can get them on Amazon and AliExpress and Wish and wherever you like. Uh, edge Paint Roller is what I believe they're called. Alright, so that's three sides. Now I want to do the fourth side and make sure I'm not going to touch the sides I've just done. Load it up with more. This is also going to hide the raw edge of the fabric if you've got that right at the seam. And just make it all around neater, in my opinion. There you go. So that's the edge done. Now, I probably should have done this one here, and I probably still might after it's dry. So I'm going to hang this over something. I don't know what yet. Maybe this. Ha! Look at that. So I'm going to hang that there to dry, um, and then I'm going to come back, do a second coat, and do the edge along here. Um, because I don't like the way that one looks. I probably should have done it before like I thought, but first time making it so it was all a bit of trial and error so I will show you when I come back next it will be the finished product all right guys and so here it is finished so we've got the 
Star Wars print poking out through there. I put some edge paint along here. And so then it just folds in half like that. Um, I hope that was helpful and just in time for Father's Day. Bye, guys.